An undisclosed location. Viewer, this is a treat in store for you. Pull up a chair, <laughs> put your feet up, enjoy an aromatic green tea from the uh, fine people's Republic of China. And we're, we're delighted to be here with uh, Mr. Hani Farsi. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Oh, thank you. It is a pleasure. Um, we had some uh, technical difficulties prior to filming, which shall not be released on camera. Uh, but but we have recorded them later, viewer, for posterity, when we leave yeah. these valuable filmed documents to Clare College, Cambridge, or yes. Churchill College, Cambridge, or whatever it is, for their archives. We will, we will impart the behind-the-scenes footage as well. But what we have for you today, viewer, is a banquet for the olfactory sense. It's so good. Yeah, whatever. Whatever it is. It whatever it is, be we've got it. And it is the smoke candle. Hanny. Yes. You're the great uh, nose behind, well, I mean, I was one of the noses. You we were all co-noses, really, with <laughs> Co-noses, that's brilliant. I've never heard of that. But well, we in were. In essence, we were. Yeah, yeah, we were, in essence, we were. It was a collaborative effort. Yeah. Um, Hanny, myself, uh, Gemma Freeman of Hunters and Franco, Tom Chamberlain, um, and the nice, is it Sarah from? Sarah, Sarah yes. from Smoke. Um, not Smoke. Evermore. Evermore. Yes. But the candle is called Smoke. Mm -hmm. And the keynotes, if I can remember them, are Birch Tar, which I thought was I brilliant. Here, Birch Tar, I tell you, reader, viewer, listener, whatever you may be doing, however you may be in, um, ingesting this cultural banquet, um, Birch Tar, I tell you, it's, mark my words, it's the one to watch. Shortly followed by patchouli, which I think was my oh, idea. You like the patchouli, don't you? Was yeah. that my idea? It was, was my idea. Other, you, you fought for patchouli. Yeah. <laughs> I did, and, and I won. And did. viewer, works. listener, reader... Um, uh, clairvoyant. Um, however, again, um, you go out, make sure that you purchase these in large quantities for Christmas. Very large quantities. Alongside, very, very the, alongside the fine silverware from Max's site and the antiques on Freddy's site. <laughs> and talk, what, what other stuff can we And talking of an, in my books, one of which is here, but talking of antiques, we have possibly the ultimate fountain, I know we've said this before, we'll probably say it at the end, but it is possibly the ultimate fountain sun cigar. No one wants to smoke it, no one knows it exists, it's an unpopular size. Uh, it's yeah. got all the hallmarks of a proper fountain sun cigar. It's great. Uh, Hany, Hany cigar collection is possibly one of the finest in the civilized world. You have such a... And brilliant. we could have had um, original Bahikes, we could have had 1492, <laughs> we could have had BHK 525456. But unfortunately I came into the equation. But we decided, decided upon... you once described it as like going to a um, three-star Michelin restaurant and ordering the bread. <laughs> 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 but here we are. Yeah. We are Which, uh, you don't open this time to a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you very much, Annie, for allowing us to uh, enjoy one Incredible. of these fine punch Nymphas! Also known as Palatellus Grande. Oh, it's not it's the, the Nymphas. No, this is the Nymphas. It is the Nymphas. Yeah, there's two Vitolas, the Salida and Galera, on this cigar. But it's um, 
a panel mass, I think. So it's 33 Jesus. ring gauge. Thin, fast panel mass. Um, I believe, and it, I believe it may very well be. You, a, this is more like a toothpick for you. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But, uh, 1990 is the box date. Um, That's the box date. We had a quick right. look at Nivello Cuso beforehand, and it's NNSO for those who really care. Well, look at that. Um, look at that viewer. Look at that. Look at that. Thing. It's upside down as well. Edger, upside no, down. No, no, the no, height is the, the, the stamp isn't. The Edger and Kuba is, but you know. Honestly, uh, they, honestly. What a world we live in. But please, please, please. Uh, Hanny, 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 you must immediately. Don't you lost it? Please, please, please. Because we're going to see whether it goes with the with the fragrance of the smoke candle. Thank this you. candle was designed to enhance and enrich the already wonderful fragrant room note of a fine Havana cigar. And I must say they're in wonderful condition. They are wonderful condition for you, Max. I know you like that. Not too not too moist. Beautiful box pressed. Mm. Honestly, you could probably cut your finger on the sharpness of that box it's pressing there. It's so good. I mean, so at a, at a 33 ring gauge, this is, you know, minuscule by today's standards. Yes, um, I mean, it's sort of the sort of thing that you would actually poke into the end of a cigar to kind of... Yeah, to, 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 to increase the but, airflow. Yes, you know? I mean, it really is. Um, but it is I, I had the pleasure of smoking, I think, three of these that you, you very kindly gave me um, uh, a year ago. You got a cut, Andy? Well, there, well, there, there you go, was, there you go. It look at that, look at that, delicious. look at that, we've got a Formula One cutter here, Zycar. This is a carbon fiber <laughs> Formula One Zycar <laughs> exactly. cutter. Goes faster than, I've got the, uh, I've got I the hope old it's a self, self carriage. Self sharpening, self cutting uh, device. It works, man. Self it works. <laughs> <laughs> it does the job. There we go. That's what we like to hear. Um, but the idea, I mean, there's some quite lyrical promotional text um, that goes with this, with the uh, candle, isn't it? That'll be found. Yeah, please, you must actually, you've got a way of reading these things. Um, so you must, uh, you must read the text. Yeah. Oh, thanks. No. So, um, oh, God. Hanny, I know yeah. this isn't your, 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 your size of choice, but what do you normally enjoy on a regular basis, cigar-wise? I mean, Honestly, it, it depends on what time of the day it is. Yeah. Um, it depends if I've had a coffee, if I've eaten. Mm. Uh, it's, um, it's, to me, it's like wine. It really depends. Yeah. I, I, I like a wide variety of cigars. I do prefer an, um, an older cigar. This is why I started the collection so many years ago. Mm. The idea was for me to, to buy cigars and just to yeah. set them aside and to enjoy it much later on. Yeah. Um, but the it also depends how much time I have. Right? This is also another question. It's, yeah, and so it's often Corona, decided if it's a small enough Corona, sometimes a Robusta, of course. Mm. Um, I also like larger cigars, but that's if I'm going to have the afternoon or if I'm going to sit down and mm. after dinner and have a long conversation or play back I mean, It depends where you live yeah. and for the occasions. And um, am I mistaken in thinking that you enjoy you were enjoying San Juan's for a while, the Sapoyo San Juan? And did you did you cotton also onto the Septimos as well, the Costa Rican blend? Um, uh, which was well, that's intriguing. true. Yeah. Um, they were actually excellent cigars. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm I'm not usually a, a non Cuban smoker, but I thought they were excellent. Which was the Septimo well, one? Why don't you use your soft blade? Sorry, I come I came in unprepared for a no. smoking program. We came no unprepared full stop. No cutters. But nothing. Hanny, Hanny. Yes. Um, but this is the Le Grand with the double oh, blue flame and the jet yeah. flame and the. What a world we live in. Eh? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is, this the is. Proper we, thing. We, we, I, I think that's an even greater technical achievement than putting man on the moon, actually. Mm -hmm. And dance are more useful. So, so when you were creating the candle, the cigars being smoked at the time? Or constantly, did constantly. Did the nose have to be kept? clean in order to uh, sense the real aromas of the, uh, the blend. No, 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 we smoked cigars constantly. Mm. We made sure that we smoked at least for three hours solidly before even even looking at a candle. I think that's the right way to do things. <laughs> yes, so that we were suitably, so our heads were suitably swimming and our palates were completely maladjusted. And the result is superb. Mm. Mm. I think as a principle we should apply this to other things as well. I'm mm. right to my entire uh, life. Absolutely. I, I, never, I never do anything. Better get out of bed unless I've been smoking a cigar for I think operating heavy machinery can only happen after five bolivars and a pass of your speed four or something. Yes, yes. So and then, then you get behind all, the all at once. All, 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 all at once. once with one of those multiple smoking devices, similar to the multiple uh, cocaine snorting device from Scarface. Yes, yeah. Well, yes, we were, we were speaking about that earlier for... for because yeah, there is the most amazing uh, um, reservoir of uh, um, silver screen memorabilia here. Mm. It, it, it is, as this poster says here, a car load of scenic effects, and it's got little devils playing dice. There's the glasses in, a, in, an, in an Edwardian environment. So yes. this is a, a very old original um, magic poster, which are, for a while, I this is before cinema, of course, so for a long time, pictures of, of Peter Redini or the great Carter or so forth, this is the great George. 
Sphinx. The pyramid, but, you've got a Chinese but, guy, you've got and, a skull. And there's, yeah, there's playing cards, dice, and three devils. Three devils, one skull, Wheel of Fortune. But I mean, I definitely want to go to that show, right? I mean, you see this. That looks like proper stuff. Definitely want to go. Yeah, I mean, you want uh, to go. I mean, I, I mean, but I feel that my life is that show. <laughs> It, but this cigar is exceptional. It's 19, delicious. It's 1990, it? and you've got I've, I've got a, re, a real sense of flavour to it. It is, and although it's the ring gauge, it's is not the one I'm used to. It's it's this is gonna take a while to smoke, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and it's and a great it, draw, by the way. It's, it's a very draw, draw, and it's not it's not a, it's not a weak cigar. No, I mean, look at the ash as well. I mean, it's perfect. The ash is beautiful. I have I, a, I have a theory about this. Do you want to hear it? Mm -hmm. Go on, tell Please. me. This is a box date of 1990, okay? Mm -hmm. So we accept that it would have been made probably in 89. Yes, we can accept uh, that. In the, in the escaparate and then boxed. What happened in 1989? The, uh, the end of communism. Yes! Brilliant! So you see, this was a cigar that would have been made during the twilight of communism, when Cuba sure. was still supported by Russia and therefore mm -hmm. didn't have to endure the terrible shortages um, that subsequently afflicted it. Uh, the shortage of string, the shortage of um, paper, the blue mold, the black mold, the CIA mold, whatever it was. Um, and this is a, this is, this shows just, I mean, this is like a, it's like a Cuban Davidoff, but with a, just a different band, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, the, the quality of construction, the quality of the ash, the mm -hmm. subtlety of the flavor dancing across the palate. Mm -hmm. It's sort of doing a kind of little tap dance across the roof of my mouth, actually. Funny that you say that, because I think it is the same size as the Davidoff 3000, um, which is a great cigar mm. as well, as, yeah. of course, you know. And um, But was this, when was it that, that Zeno or Davidoff set fire to 130,000 Davidoff cigars? You set a bonfire, didn't you? And he burned, and instead of returning <laughs> them to Cuba Tobacco, who said they would have given him a full refund, he burned them all on a bonfire. Was that? Was that, is, that, is, that is that actually true? Well, apparently so. Who told you that? Uh, I think no, I, <laughs> I think I might have been there. I might have been applying the blue touch paper to that particular conflagration. Uh, even if it didn't happen, it's a great story. I'm, mm. I'm going to continue on telling. Mm. Um, I think well, it'd be very. Well, what a year or two later. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If, he, if, he, if he did set fire to 130,000 of these, I have to say, I would. I regret that. If they were all this good, I they weren't. That, they weren't. That was the whole thing. And they were substandard. Yeah, that's the whole thing. He's not just going to take hundred thousand. Which it, it was like it was like, like Monet's art dealer in New York. He um, the, some of the later paintings were so bad that he destroyed them, and then they released the information to say that they were keeping the quality high because, of course, Monet was able to knock them out fairly, fairly briskly. Mm. But with people like that, you're not paying for the um, time they spent on it. You're paying for the expertise and the time they, you know, they acquired. Like, so what was it? Picasso was saying you can finish a painting in ten minutes and charge. I have many thousand for it. Um, and it because it took them so many years to get to that point. Exactly. Yeah. What exactly I do with my work. It is, you're a genius. <laughs> exactly what I do with my I work. Come I mean, in. This, this video, this video, Hanny Farsi is paying, I think, 20 or 30,000 pounds a minute for this video. Oh, and no. it is exceptional <laughs> value. Oh my it is God. exceptional oh. value because not only is he acquiring those valuable minutes of my time in the present, he is also drawing upon that rich well of experience. Mm. That makes me the character I am today. But Hanny and I go back to the days of Mr. Bin Hendy, don't we? Before I, I, I met him in '95. Oh no, we were, we were no, before we, then. We, we, we met when you were still writing for the Evening Standard. You were reviewing a restaurant um, at the end of uh, of um, Draco Avenue, right next to that place. There's a restaurant on the corner there, and uh, I went there to meet you with a mutual friend. And, and that would have been before 95, I yeah. think, even. I mean, it would have been, yeah, yeah we, I mean, we're getting waiting for 30 years, and, and then, yeah, true. And then, as soon as I moved to London, and then uh, that famous place, Monty's opened, and and then, yeah, you reviewed my restaurant, actually. You reviewed Shea as well. And that first review is framed with a spotlight no. on it just behind the camera. Really out, two of, review. <laughs> out of sight. Two stars, and we only, we, only were, we only were awarding a single star in those days for you, so it was doubly good. That was the restaurant Che, which was a landmark right in the corner from um, Davidoff. Those were the days, London in the 90s. It was like Athens in the time of Pericles. It was, um, it was, it was like Augustan Rome. Paris in the 1920s. Oh yes, viewer. Berlin in the 1930s and London in the 1990s. The 1990s. Not the 60s, mind you. No, it's the 1990s. Funny, 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swing 60s. No, 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 no. That's swinging London. Swinging London. That was merely a rehearsal for the 1990s. <laughs>
It's, um, it's very fitting, actually, that we're smoking a cigar from the 1990s, because there has been a revival recently amongst the youth of today. Um, with not for slim the 90s, cigars, really. Not for slim cigars, but with uh, 90s clothing, baggy trousers, skateboarding is having a revival. And I think 1990s punch nin fats would work very well with that. Well, I think it works very well for me. And look at that ash. I look at that ash. I'm going to call it? upon the, our, our film crew here to, to, to close up. You like the striations, but there's not many striations. The, stri the striations yeah, are pretty very, good. Very smooth. I mean, look Striated. at that. Yeah. You know, that is that is civilization the right there. That. that is why mankind is the apex species on this planet. This is proper stuff. We and don't mess around. Well, it's delightful, and it's so, it's so And smoke, you see, smoke the candle, the candle itself. Right, yes. Mm. Smoke by name and burnt tar by nature. I think the combination with a bit of patchouli. The cigar smoke and and, the and hang on a second. Hang well. on a second. Oh, please, no. please, please, please. The sandalwood. Sandalwood. There's an or I think there's an orange lift or something here. There's a bit of, there's a bit uh, there's of what else have we got? A cardamom definitely sends a cardamom. Um, and, uh, Goes without saying. I mean, even the viewer one. can smell the cardamom. And um, birch tar, patchouli. Patchouli is the patchouli is now the number one here. Patchouli, then birch tar. The two my two favorite ingredients. Vetiver at this base. Vetiver is a bit too subtle for me. Almost smoke is it's sumptuous and rich. Not unlike us, honey. Eh? Well, I mean. I'll go for the sumptuous, you can have the rich or vice versa. Um, a gentle combination. Well, that's maybe you, Max. You're the gentle combination. I'm a gentle soul. You are Feeble a gentle human soul. Being. And then the earthy quality we will ascribe to our creative director. Um, and it is bay and nutmeg and orange blossom, as I was right. I was right. There is right. a bit of orange right. in there. Right. Not bad. And it provides a means to escape to another time, city, or season. All that viewer for in a in a scented candle. Um, you forgot the main thing. Um, everything it's it's also vegan, so there's no bees wax. There's no paraffin. No bees were murdered during the making and, of this candle. <laughs> and everything in the box is actually completely recyclable. So there's well, no well. plastic. There's nothing. The glass, the gold, everything is 100 percent recyclable. That's brilliant. Whoa. Just like, like the cigar ash. Like the cigar smoke. Like the cigar ash. But I think it's like this should be Look the this should, the, uh, this should be the official candle of the COP 20 whatever. Yeah, I didn't think of that. No, sure? I mean, okay, viewer, we are being told to, we are being told that the um, many camera filming devices are running out of the power. Roll, we the have to roll, the, 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 the blue roll, the B roll, roll, the Swiss roll, the C roll, the Arctic roll, the. That's um, what we're talking about. The drum the splitter, roll. The splitter, 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 splitter. Viewer, we're going, to, we're going to have a rest, and we're going to step out of some more candles. So, um, see you in a bit. Bear with us. And we're back once again. We haven't passed out yet we haven't gone to sleep we're still awake and we're still here such is the scintillating nature of the conversation <laughs> it sparkles like a christmas tree it really keeps you on edge but like um, a d flawless five thousand carat diamond the light just dances across the surface and out out of the middle the diamond middle. sets not encrusted yeah we want. but you know what we would do viewer listener clairvoyant, clairvoyant. um reader we were braille person um <laughs> You know, person watching this in Chinese, um, it's a lot of work for the viewer to do, isn't it? Really, all those, all those different formats, all that multimedia it possibility. Has to be watched in all formats as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're a multimedia organisation pivoting on a on a halfpenny, but we're faffing well, around here. We've got some more important. We to say. were doing some light leisure mathematics earlier, weren't we? Mm, we yeah, nothing yeah. we like better than a sort of mathematical problem. And it was a Henke Kellner style mathematical. It problem was, it was, well. and the great thing is that um, this. Is that the is that the the three hundred or the hundred and forty five? Um, two hundred forty five. Um, that is a thirty hour burn, mm -hmm. and we were trying to work out. There's the big one, which is the sixty hour burn, and we were trying to work out how many double coronas you could fit into um, into a th into a thirty min thirty hour candle. Now, well, how long does a double corona take you, honey? Well, in the old days, I know very well, that was 90 minutes, because there was, yes. a, there was a cigar match, there was a football match. Ah, football I see, match. I so see. Of course, there was no penalties, nothing like that. Yeah. Yeah, so did you have something for extra time? Um, to the other side? No, well, Robusto, usually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What do they call that, the penalty shootout, or whatever it's called? Um, in Spanish, yes, but that's it, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, there's a certain game for it. Oh yes, I'm. Viewer, you'll, you'll, you'll notice I'm very keen on association football. It's one of my favourite pastimes. So ninety saying, minutes. But I would say, I could say you could probably get through a double crane in an hour now, couldn't you? I completely agree. Uh, if it's green and, and yeah. young and, and yeah. 
Well, this is headlines at the time. Yeah, it's significantly yeah. underfilled as well. You can get them done quite quickly. Well, I mean, but this, I mean, this is this has been proving to be already a what a twenty minutes ago, maybe more, maybe uh, more like forty-five. Uh, yeah, maybe more than half an hour. So yeah, yeah, so far. So I mean, let us say that it's uh, forty minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Into a thirty-hour candle. You're looking at me as if I paid attention. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that knows these things. Uh, well, like teachers always say you'll never always have you never have a calculator on you at all times. Well, here we are. And we do. And, and we, we do. And we do. And we do. It's so in the form of my father. And, <laughs> let me try. Let me try. Let me try and work this out. So um, you would have had thirty of them, and then there would still be six hours left, I think. Maybe maybe not. I, I don't mean, know. But anyway, I'm just going to agree. Quite a number. Yeah. Quite a number of cigars. Maybe number, yeah. maybe. I mean, certainly an entire box. Uh, yeah, yeah more so. More, 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 maybe a box and a half. Box and a half. Box and a half. Box and a half. Well, I mean, I mean, honestly, I can't. I mean, my mathematics is so. Yeah, it's very precise. Well, these days. Very precise. Is, this is, this is as precise as you can get. I mean, you yeah. tell the time by sundial as well. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. Forty-five cigars. Forty-five cigars, viewer. So that's a box and very nearly another box. But there was also something, Hanny, you, you wanted to mention about with regards to the creation of the candle and, and yeah. yeah, the story behind it. So uh, the idea came, what's the inspiration behind the candle? Uh, and the idea was uh, the library. Mm. Basically the idea that the letter from the books, the paper, um, the, ah. the, the, the fireplace that may have been lit and it's died out and still there, so it's the embers. It's also the cigar smoker would have been in the library. So yeah. all these things together, the thick curtains as well. Mm. Uh, that was the inspiration behind it. And so if you think about that, you, and there was a fireplace, it goes to winter really, right? So it's winter, it's, it's cozy. And these, this was the starting point, sort of a mood board. And then from there, um, well, we, from there we, are, we, got the here. Set, set we got here, here which yeah. is in a library with leather bound books. And so you need, you need to read the a fireplace. book, nor smoke a cigar, you can just light one of your candles and you get the whole experience. Well. I wonder if it's a Charles I wonder, I wonder if we should see how many Charles Dickens novels we could fit into uh, <laughs> a 30 minutes. I think that's for another episode. Again. I don't think that yeah. can be... That would be so good. We could do... We I could think do. the mathematics is going to take too long to actually... No, no, no. I've done that. I've done the mathematics. But what about how many how many, how many, many 60-hour candles do you think it would require to do Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire? Bearing in mind that probably takes us up to the fall of Constantinople in the 15th century. So what, it's four volumes? Four volumes. But I think they're about 30 hours each or something to read. And that's if you don't take any uh, breaks. And, and lose interest in, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah and, stay, and stay away. I mean, the prose, the, uh, Gibbon's prose is brilliant. As you well know, I'm a big fan of Gibbon. Uh, likewise. So Churchill. He is brilliant. I mean, I was, I, was, I was reading about Julian the Apostate only this morning, and the three sons, the three sons of Constantine, or whatever his name was. I remember you calling me up, and you said, you never guess what? I was reading about Julian this morning, and I was ah. Okay, okay. Uh, anyway, yeah. viewer, for, for memories. You can tell my mind is now departing from my body. <laughs> and I am going onto the astral plane. Um, so, so, so all the in all, boys will be needed. All in all, this is a very unfashionable cigar. Delicious. And whatever you do, if you, fear, if you see a box, don't buy it, but let us know because we will <laughs> buy it. Mm. Thank you. Good night. We're fighting the virus one corona at a time, unfortunately, still, but still, we're still fighting it. And um, thank you, Hanny, Thank you, Thank you, Hanny. But thank Good you, morning. Hanny, above all, for inviting thank us you. out of our ancestral hobble to uh, your gracious, uh, graciously appointed so meeting room. And bringing out these incredibly unpopular cigars for us to smoke. We're it's delighted. Like you are the best. Oh, thank you. Thank you.